This video will discuss half cell reactions in electrochemistry. So as from the previous video, our kind of prototypical example of some electrochemical reaction, it's where we have solid tin atoms plus nickel ions in the aqueous solution, two plus cations, it goes to uh, tin two plus cations in aqueous solution plus nickel metal solid atoms. So what happens here is the tin is going to get oxidized to tin 2 plus and the electrons, the two electrons I could produce are going to flow over to nickel cations in solution and form solid nickel atoms, the nickel getting reduced, receiving two electrons, gaining them going from 2 plus up to an oxidation state of zero. So what we can do is separate this reaction into what are called two half cell reactions. So the first one would be nickel 2 plus in aqueous solution plus two electrons reacting to form nickel solid. So this is reduction. This is something that would occur at the cathode on the right side of our electrochemical diagram. We have tin solid reacting to form tin 2 plus aqueous cations plus two electrons. It loses two electrons getting oxidized and this is what occurs at the anode on the left side of our electrochemical diagram. So both of these are, are the same kind of thing. So if they're reversible, we could easily have reduced tin ions and oxidized nickel metal, but we chose to draw them in this direction. So this is one example of a kind of half cell reaction, something that occurs in half of our electrochemical cell diagram and something that we can use to generate electrical work. So this video will discuss some of the common kinds of half cell reactions that occur and what the experimental setup looks like for those types of half cells. Okay, so the most common one that I mentioned is the first kind. It's the kind that both of these half cells are. That's where we have an electrode, which is made out of a solid metal, for example, tin or nickel. And then in aqueous solution, we have that metal ion with some charge that is a cation in aqueous solution. So often there will be some counter ion in solution with it, such as sulfate. If sulfate matches the two negative charge of tin and nickel quite well. But since it's not part of the net chemical reaction, we usually don't draw it in, in the result. So, a, so in an oxidation where we have a metal electrode going to metal aqueous cations and some number of electrons, that's our first kind of half cell. The next kind of half cell is where we have a we have a wire coming down and we have solid metal but there's also some type of metal salt on the cath on this uh, cathode or anode as well on our electrode. And then in aqueous solution once again there are cations of that given metal. So what's going to happen here is we have the solid metal in the electrode plus some number of aqueous anions, maybe this is chloride, fluoride, sulfate, nitrate, who knows, going to form some metal salt plus a given number of electrons. So this actually is going to happen in two steps. So for the electrons there, first we're going to oxidize the metal producing the electrons, then the metal is going to react with the aqueous anions forming the metal salt. So maybe this is some sparingly soluble salt, which as soon as the uh, metal ion gets in contact with those anions is going to uh, crash out of the solution and form this metal, this metal salt solid. So that's a second kind of possibility for a half cell reaction. Third, we have what's called a hydrogen electrode, something where we could use a kind of gas. So what we have here is we have H2 gas flowing in through some kind of inlet and it's being bubbled up in a solution which has pr protons in it. It has hydrogen cations in aqueous solution, so some kind of acid typically, maybe HCl for example, a strong acid which can generate uh, protons in solution. So then there's a metal wire that the hydrogen gas can get bubbled over and react with these uh, ions in solution producing and then it's going to produce uh, H plus ions that are going to flow about the solution there. So one half of an H2 gas molecule is going to react 
to form a hydrogen cation in aqueous solution and one electron which can then flow over our wire, some inert metal wire. All right, and then the fourth kind of half cell reaction we could have is something where we have some kind of inert metal electrode. So an inert metal being an electrode which is not going to participate in the net chemical reaction. And we have something else that, just, that it's going to be oxidized and reduced in the solution. So one example could be we could have a metal ion with a certain oxidation state N plus and a metal with another oxidation state M plus where N and M are not equal. So in this case, I suppose uh, M would be greater than N, but they're both some integer number of, of charge. So the less oxidized metal would react to form the more oxidized metal plus whatever the difference in oxidation state is, that number of electrons. So a common example might be something going from an oxidation state of plus 2 to something of plus 3, generating 3 minus 2, 1 electron that would go into the inert metal electrode and flow up a wire. So these are just some kinds of examples of half cells which are possible. Uh, we'll look at some different kinds in this chapter as some examples, but the common thread that is running out through all of these is that we have something which is in an initial oxidation state. It's going to get oxidized to produce electrons, resulting in something of a higher oxidation state. And then in, in another half cell, the reverse would be happening where we'd be getting reduced from a high oxidation state to a lower oxidation state with more electrons.